Hi folks, Joey Ricard with TracksideScenery.com. Welcome back. You're looking at a layout that we visited last fall? I gotta tell you, the weathering and detail were phenomenal. Take a look at the contrast between weathered track and unweathered locomotives. I think most of us put at least some effort into trying to make our models look real. In my book, everything's a model. The train, the landscape, the trees, and if you think about it, even a backdrop. There's a lot of products out there that you can use to weather your track, and there's a lot of different ways to get the job done. Today, I want to talk about using inexpensive materials, and I want to show you what I do to prepare and weather track to produce a realistic and weathered effect. You can even ask Muggsy, hey Muggsy! There's a lot of factors that can and should affect the final appearance of your weathering efforts. Some of these factors even include how realistic you want your track to be or whether or not you'll be shooting close-up photos. Heck, even the lighting in your room will affect the final outcome of how your weathering turns out. No matter which way you go, it all starts with some of the colors you choose to begin with. Now I know there's a lot of products aimed at this very task and I occasionally use some of those products, but to tell you the truth, I like the results and ease of use I'm getting with acrylic paints and chalks. Chalks? Yep, they're cheap. Let's go find some. Okay, so Hitler decides he's going to take over territories that used to belong to Germany. This includes the Sudetenland and it includes the area of the Rhineland here. Of the Rhine. It also includes Austria. Um. No. There's a lot of commercially available weathering powders out there, but sometimes you can use just plain old chalk. I get Joey all kinds of colors of chalk at the craft store. You thought I was going to say a yard sale, didn't you? Finding your own chalk in a powder does take extra time, but it is well worth the effort. Yes. Why, thank you. Okay, quick supply list. You can pause the video if you need to write it down. Number four, don't be a wise guy. You know what I'm talking about. These are the chalks from the craft store we were talking about. There's a bunch of different earth tone colors. That's the cheese grater we got from the dollar store. Guess how much that cost? That makes me happy. At least you guys are paying attention. Look at these earth tone colors. A lot of different colors here. I'm going to use this one because it looks like dark rust. Now remember, this isn't rocket science. You can buy cheap acrylic craft paints at a lot of stores. I don't have any particular brand, but I use black, white, suede, burnt and raw umber, and I also use mud. When I'm weathering track, the chalks I use are rust colors. I also use black. Step one is painting your track flat black with cheap spray paint. And the reason we do this is to give some bite to the acrylic paints and the chalks that are gonna go on over top of it. This also serves as a base coat because if we miss any spots, it won't be as noticeable. If you have the luxury to paint and weather your track before it goes on the layout, you're doing yourself a favor. I know it's harder once it's on the layout, but the processes are still the same, no matter what method you use. Painting and weathering track is a long process, so the only difference in this case, your back will hurt more when you're done. Step two for us is painting your ties, and I'm going to do it with a suede color, cheap acrylic paint. You're going to see that I'm using brighter than normal colors and there's a reason for that. I found that if I use actual colors ahead of time, they get dumbed down too far and they almost look black. And don't forget, we still have to mount this track on the layout and apply ballast. So this is sort of like putting makeup on a clown. We're going to make it up and then we're going to dumb it down. You don't have to be perfect in painting the ties, but make sure you get the ends of the ties and anything outside the rail because that's going to show more. In step three, it's time to paint the rails, but we're gonna paint it with chalk. Yep, that's right. We're gonna make a dark rust paint mixture with powdered chalks and we're gonna paint the rail. I'm gonna take that rust colored chalk that we saw earlier, I'm gonna mix it with some black to get a darker color. I'm gonna wet it down with alcohol. Just mix it up real good, don't make it too watery, and it'll end up something like a pasta sauce. Hey, tough guy, huh? Yeah, don't stick that on your pasta. Okay, I'm not going to waste a bunch of time with details such as what size paintbrush and all that jazz. Just pick up something you can use to get a nice even coat of paint on the rail. Do a nice job and take your time just covering a little bit of the tie plates. Smaller scales obviously require more precision, but it's the same process. Remember we talked about the clown makeup? Look at that and look how bright it is. That's okay because we're going to dumb it down, but step four, we're going to do some touch-ups. We're going to take a nice flat brush, use that suede color, square off the tie plates, make it look nice and pretty. 
I just use a dry brush effect here. I do the outside of the ties on both sides. I also do the inside, make it look nice. This is the final step of actually weathering the track before it goes on the layout, but it's the most fun and it gives you the most satisfaction because you're almost done. You don't have to be too careful unless you're in your living room or something, but just get that black chalk and a big fat brush and dust. Now this is that first piece of flex track we were working with after it's been dusted. You can see the difference. Look in the background there. That's a piece that has not been dusted. And this is a piece that has. You see how we've dumbed it down? That's the look we're going for. And once we get it on the layout, put some ballast in there, wet it down, the dark chalk is going to get into the cracks and crevices. It's going to look great. I hope you've enjoyed this look at how I weather track. It's not the only way, but it's an inexpensive way that produces very realistic effects with just a little bit of practice. I gotta tell you, we have a lot of fun making these videos, and there's more to come. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. See you next time. There's a lot, a lot, there's a lot of, wait a minute, wait a minute, keep running.